Well, it's a dull, dreary day here in Arkansas. Rainy, miserable. And I'm going to try out my brand new Dutch oven. I've got the charcoal already. And I'm going to set the old Dutch oven up there. Just like that. It's a Lodge Dutch oven, a number uh, 12, which is an 8 quart. Let's see, we'll take this baby off of here. And we're going to put us some chow in there. And I'm going to try my hand at cooking a mountain man breakfast. And I have seasoned this thing. They come pre-seasoned, but I wanted to season it uh, a little bit more. Uh, my grandson and I have whipped up a plate of bacon, Italian sausage, and onions. <laughs> I could eat it just like that. We're going to put that in there. Get that stuff for cooking. This is going to be my version of the mountain man breakfast. All right, we'll stir her around in there. Use a wooden spoon, of course. Always works best for me. They're longer, keep your hands away from the heat. And you don't dig up your uh, seasoned surface. Incidentally, I seasoned this thing with Wesson oil. Uh, put the oil in it, outside, inside, also on the lid, top and bottom. And I put it inside my uh, charcoal grill here and let it cook for an hour. Then I took it out, wiped it all down, after it cooled, of course to where I could handle it, it was still a little warm, and put more oil on it and did it a second time. And this time I let it cool down completely and did a complete wipe down on it. And boy, I'll tell you what, she's just nice and black looking the way it's supposed to be. All right, I got my grandson, my second oldest grandson, uh, Joseph here. He cut the onions and he's stirring it around. Just kind of chop up the, uh, chop up the, uh, the meat a little bit into smaller pieces and uh, stir it around till that bacon starts looking real good, real fried. And then stick the lid back on for a little bit longer. It takes a while using a Dutch oven, but I'll tell you what, cooked out in the open air like this, it's just great. It smells good. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm one of these jokers who thinks that uh, Cavender's all-purpose Greek seasoning is good for everything. And I'm telling you, it is. So we're going to sprinkle a little bit of that in there too. If this uh, Mountain Man breakfast doesn't turn out so good, doesn't taste good, uh, I'm going to have to send this uh, Dutch oven back to Lodge because uh, I can't blame myself, so i got to blame someone else. Look at that. Man, that is looking so good. So good. Smells delicious. It is time to add some hash browns. That, that stuff down here is looking just about right. I'm going to add a little hash browns to this thing. I'm not going to use a ton, but I want enough in there to where it makes a nice little layer. These are frozen hash browns by the way. I think that'll do. Let me see here. Let me go ahead and spread it around a little bit with the old wooden spoon and see what that looks like. We've only got a few people eating this breakfast so I can't have a you know really thick spread out one. I'm going to have to have a really thick in the middle one. <laughs> Alright, I think that's going to look really nice. Yeah, right, we're going to add a little salt and pepper to this. Put a little bit on. I've already added a little bit anyway. Okay, it's starting to sprinkle again. I don't believe it. Okay, go ahead and put the lid back on there, Joseph. Joseph, he's my strong man here. Yeah. He's my strong man. Well, as luck would have it, it's beginning to rain. And the, uh, the radar I checked showed none. So we're going to have to move this operation to the carport. Okay, we're set back up right in front of the wifey's car. Hey, we adapted. We overcame. There's going to be uh, three of us eating, so I just went ahead and put in uh, six eggs. And now I'm going to scramble them, them babies up because we're getting ready to pour them on top of the hash browns. Now let's see how the old hash browns are doing. I just whipped up those eggs. Haven't put them in yet. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, my goodness. Look at the steam. All right. Oh, she's looking real nice, real nice. It's uh, time to reduce the heat a little bit, so I again lifted the Dutch oven, made a hole in the center, and pushed all the uh, charcoals out a little bit. Now we're just going to kind of put a few around the edge, and the rest will go on the top. Okay, we've got the charcoal on the top, and my grandson is fixing to lift the lid for me very carefully so he don't get any ashes. 
and they just grab a hold of the round part there. No, 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 the round part. Oh, the part. Yeah, yeah. The handle. There you go. Okay, there you go. Lift straight up and off to the side. There we go. All right, we're going to go ahead and pour the egg in here. Just like so. Some people like to pack down the eggs so, or the uh, potatoes so the egg don't run down in there, but I don't care. You know, it doesn't bother me at all. Let her run down in there. It's all going to the same place anyway. All right, put the lid back on, Joseph. And we will let that set for a little while longer. There you go. Good. I added uh, three more charcoal briquettes, uh, briquettes on each side. It was The others were burning down quite a bit. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do to keep the heat up. I put the, uh, the larger ones on top, so that's probably why. They'll burn down in a couple of seconds, and we'll have all the heat we need to finish this up. All right, it's time to lay some cheese on this. Now, I'm going to lay some American slices like that all the way around. Then I'm going to cover the rest. I'm going to cover that up with some grated cheddar. All right, we're putting the old grated cheese on there. All right, the inside was looking pretty darn good. So I think what we'll do now is we want to get that cheese melted and looking good. So I think I'll put some more charcoal from the bottom. That'll reduce the heat on the bottom and apply a little more heat at the top, which is what we need to get that old cheese melted and browned over real nice. And I'll get back with you here in a few seconds and see if my brilliant ideas work. This is my first time at cooking a mountain man breakfast. The last thing to go in is a little bit of Rotel. A can of Rotel. Probably should have had a larger can, but I just got the uh, Mexican lime and cilantro. We just kind of spread it around. I poured off most of the juice. We don't need a ton of juice up here. Just a little bit, enough to get it wet. Okay, put the lid back on. We'll just warm up this stuff. That's all we're going to do. We're not going to cook it. We're just going to warm it up. All right, stick that back on. Looking good. Here we go. I believe this is the last opening. And it is. Ooh, does that look good? Almost looks like a pizza pie. All right, let's scoop some out and see what it looks like. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, man. I'm hoping this stuff tastes really good. That one's yours, that one's Grandma's. That'll be mine. All right. Well, that's what's left of the Mountain Man breakfast. It went down to shoot. Everybody liked it. It was real good. And uh, the Rotel and the Cavenders... Uh, Greek seasoning really, really did, did wonders for this thing. I did a search uh, of all files and folders, which, and then I went down and clicked Advanced, and I included Search System Folders, search hidden files and folders and search subfolders. I included all of that in my search and I came up with a shadow edit file uh, where all of these videos that I have been making <laughs> for a very long time they have been storing it looks like almost a duplicate copy or portions of each of the little segments. You know how I segment my uh, videos a little bit at a time here, a little bit at a time there it's been saving another copy of it in a shadow file. So now I'm going to have to delete all of these that you see here and I'll come back up and let you know what kind of a hard drive space I have then. I started out with six gigs, I think. Let's see how it goes. Well, 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 I now have 22 gigabytes available. How about that for freeing up some space? Well, I found the culprit. On the uh, PowerDirector 9 program, in order to convert or uh, process my videos as high definition, it, they, they use a shadow file. And once it gets in that shadow file, it stays unless I go there and delete it, which I will now do from time to time. 